Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our industry expert uh, webinar on Chinese face reading. I am very, very excited to be sharing this information with you and really having, I think, one of the most amazing master instructors ever, uh, Miss Judy Patton, as our as our kind of our leader and a guru in the subject matter. She's definitely well versed in this and has such a uh, way to explain it that you really just feel kind of like a giant hug of understanding and just really understanding how every piece of your body is copacetic with the other, right? So understanding that your liver is kind of part of that area where we might've had a little too much fun over the weekend. Um, your bladder, your pancreas, all these amazing things that collate with this Eastern style medicine. So uh, I would love to give Judy the, uh, the stage, but first I wanted to like, give you just a little bit of knowledge about the International Dermal Institute if you don't know us or if you're new to us. So uh, as the International Dermal Institute, uh, we were brought around in 1983 and really we strive to be that, that high level of postgraduate education. And we really always wanna be in line with industry trends and even you know, disrupting the industry trends and really giving insight to our professional skin therapists. So this is one of those subject matters that alternative medicine, that alternative thinking, and Judy's gonna take you on a journey definitely um, into this amazing subject. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Judy and she's gonna give you about a 45 minute presentation on Chinese face reading. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone from an international audience today, to everyone here in the United States. Thank you so much for joining me and our team. We really appreciate that. And I hope to be able to touch some great points in the way of understanding a little bit more about such a fascinating topic. Uh, not just Chinese face reading, but all of the Eastern philosophies. So we're going to go beyond a classical approach of looking and analyzing the skin. And that's what's really unique and exciting. So with that, we're going to look at energy points, we're going to be looking at skin conditions, but in a whole different way. And it's not to ever replace what we've been taught at the International Dermal Institute and our classic ways and traditional ways, but it's there to be able to help us to understand, just like Celeste said, the whole body and how it all connects. So not only are you joining because of, and thanks to the International Dermal Institute, but that's where I had my training. And of course, uh, 22 almost years later, and I'm here being able to take and have such a privilege to be able to share some of that knowledge with you uh, today. So let's start by, no, we're not gonna be taking a trip. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? But I'd like you to consider this suitcase being placed right next to wherever you're seated today. And the reason why we have this suitcase is we're going to ask you to take some of the traditional classic train ways that you've been trained and to just put it aside for a little bit. Don't worry, I'll absolutely get you access to it at the end of our 45 minutes together. And you can kind of rearrange things maybe a little bit, but it's a perfect way to be able to put aside some of the ways in which we understand how things work. When we think about skin and when we think about the Western world, we really think beyond that, whether we go in and get a medical procedure, we're getting a blood test, it, it's very, very set in the ways in which we follow those particular sightings of blood, urine, everything that we need to do. But not so much in Chinese medicine. 
So the Eastern philosophy is about that mind and body connection. And that's really the avenue that we're going to help you to understand a little bit more within our time frame, right? There's so much more to be able to learn. So with that in mind, I'd love to open with one of my favorite quotes. And uh, when we look at anything that Confucius has shared with us through the years, almost 3,000 years, this happens to be one that seems so simple in theory when you say you cannot open a book without learning something. So that's my message. That's the mantra for this afternoon or this morning. It will really be something that I'd like you to think about and put aside, and yet really we're going to expand our minds into something different. So we're going to look at the observations of the universe law. Hmm, quite a mouthful, right? Thinking about that, what in the heck could be the universal law? We'll take a peek into that. We're going to look also at yin and yang. And maybe a lot of us have said that saying, you know, it's the yin and yang of life. But oftentimes, really, what does that, what is the backstory? What's the meaning of yin and yang? So we're going to peek into that as well. And then a little bit on alternate types of uh, therapies. Um, there's so many that we can do, but we'll just highlight a few of those. And then what in the heck is chi? Have you heard of that word? I bet you have. Chi can be spelled the C-H-I or the Q-I, depending on different nations and exactly uh, the meaning of it is all about the energy and the life force that we're going to explore. And then last but not least, I'd like to share that your face is never going to lie to you. <laughs> we're going to look at clients and we're going to go beyond the normal things that we do, which we still want to do but we're gonna take that a step deeper. So come join me. Let's look at the observations of universal laws. I love these two portraits actually, or pictures of landscaping, portraits of uh, changing times. When we look at that beautiful painting on the right, where the mist is there, the mountaintops, the trees are there, well, this is a pretty much of a classic painting that's been around for centuries, and it really helps to look at beginnings of yin and yang, because all things in Eastern philosophy are thought to be connected or grounded together. So even though we're going to discuss some of our human traits and what we look for, I want you to think that that universal law is, hmm, I'm really connected or grounded to the universe. I don't know if any of you have ever traveled to any Asian countries, but if you've been to China, Japan, you can go to any park early in the morning and see hundreds of people, even in their 90s, moving around slowly. And you think, what the heck are they doing? What kind of exercise is that? And that's really working on how to create chi, which we'll get into for sure. So we're looking at these observations and they're really the people that are in the parks and trying to be able to obtain an energy flow. And if you look at the picture on the left, you're really seeing close up the leaves on the tree, the mist along the water base. And all things being said, we're going to look at the seasons, the climate, um, nature in its best. So everything is having its origin in yin and yang. So we'll explain that a little bit more too. So let's start. What I'd love everyone to do right now is to take in a deep breath through your nose. Hold it for a second. And watch what happens to the chest when we do that. So let's try it, all right? Chest is expanding. That's a very yang part of breath. When we release it and exhale, we're in the most yin state of our breath. So it isn't where you think of being all yang or all yin. 
it's very important that we flow in and out of these particular modalities. So by saying that, that symbol probably looks really familiar to a lot of you, right? Um, some of us have said, you know, it's the, it's the yin and yang of life. And yet we don't really know exactly maybe what that means. So it's absolutely a different way that we possess energy. So it's kind of referred to as the great polarity. We know that this cycle that you're looking at is never blocked, it's ever changing. And in fact, the black seed and the black side of that symbol represents the yin. And I'll give you some examples coming up where the white side is reflective of yang, the sunny energy and such that we might possess. But there's never one particular element that overrides or it shouldn't that's not a good way to live. So it's that great balance. And what we call the hidden seed reminds us of that because there's a little bit of yang and we may have a very yin day or the opposite way. So it's not just black and white. It's very polarized, isn't it? And that's a very simple explanation today of yin and yang, but we'll carry it through our theme. So let's look. If you were to look at a whole mountain, not just the sunny side of the mountain, but a whole mountain, and we kind of take it for granted when we do look at that beautiful scenery, when we're on a drive or such, but if we look a little deeper and look at more of the intricacies of that mountainside, we may see on a really bright, shiny, sunny day, we're going to look for a lot of these particular things about the landscape. But we're also going to tie it in to us humans. So let's bring it to a client. Haven't you had a client that's ready to have their treatment? And you, you know Mrs. Jones, and she's going to get on the bed and no blankets. She doesn't want to be covered. She wants her arms out. She wants to not be cocooned, and we're dying to cocoon them if we're a very yin individual, but no, Mrs. Jones is not having that. So that client might be really warm all the time. They may be very, very active. They are athletic. They are noisy. They may come into your room with a cup of coffee in one hand, cell phone in the other, and when that happens, we know like, okay, they want to almost be a little bit disruptive, right? They want to talk loud. They're looking at everything. They're so stimulated by the visuals in your room. They're the type of client that loves electrical modalities. They are very open to that. They want new things. They're very much um, loving all of that technology and want to try whatever your latest products could be as well. Now, I know the word barren is an unusual word to throw into this mix here, but oftentimes when we talk um, different languages, when we're thinking about wisdom and barren, it's more of the starkness. So sometimes they can be stark in their approach to people and they can be very, you know, we have that kind of snippy or snappy side to us too. So that's the stimulation that often is something that that client may have. Now we have a lot of yang traits, right? Some of you might be identifying yourself with some of these remarks that I just made. And in the Chinese medicine and Eastern philosophy connection, we're very much grounded to our environment. So they really look to be able to get this flow and this balance, and that's what we really are looking for, which I'll explain a little more about the balance of chi. How about if we look at the things that we're, we know in the way of excitement, things that the clients really, uh, you know, you just have those favorite clients that they always seem to have a good day, right? But remember, it's an ebb and flow for sure. And when we look at the sunny side of things, we think of daytime, we think of lightness, and that's just part. This description that we're sharing is not only part of 
the human traits, but remember, because we're connected to the landscape that we just looked at, it's very much all in one. So a lot of these terms may make more sense if we apply them to the landscape, right? Okay, so from here, we'll look at what happens towards the evening or the shady side of a mountain, as they say, where the trees grow moss, where it's that, you know, you know you're looking north or you're heading north. So a lot of the things that are more yin examples can be the client, again, who gets on the bed and they say, give me that weighted blanket. I want that 15 pounds back on my body. I love to be cocooned, wrap me tighter. They're the person that loves the herbal linen wraps for body treatments. They just love to have all warmed up more or less because they feel cold. But maybe to them, the winter vacation is just ideal, right? Going snowboarding or skiing they may be more passive in their direction. They may ah, love to be able to, they don't, they manage their stress well on a good day, right? The end people can do that. They stay calm or try to, and we all have that ability to be really excited or to stay more calm and relaxed, um, especially when they're in the treatment, right? They're in their element. They just can't wait to come back under that weighted blanket. And then they may have more quiet traits. And that particular individual may be someone who won't share a lot. That's why we look at their consultation card and try to gather some good information. Um, but they're just there to chill, relax, and enjoy. And they may seem kind of shy and tranquil. And those are some of the things that we know that maybe they started out that way in the morning. By the afternoon, they have a lot of yang elements too. So it isn't really possessed by just the time of the day or the evening, but we flow in and out. That's a perfect ideal ebb and flow, right? Okay. Um, for sure, I mentioned the dampness. That's kind of relating to the environment the moss along the tree, the ways in which the moistness of the skin, all of that can really relate together. Interesting, huh? Okay, lush green uh, countryside and things that we see, those are more yin in nature. Okay, so restful. Mm. <laughs> Clients love to get on the bed right and take a little nap. Yeah, okay. And again, typically it would be more for the evening time of the 24 hour cycle, right? Our circadian rhythm and how it gets us into those different cycles. So speaking of cycles and speaking of kind of laying a foundation for you, let's talk about meridians and what are they? So meridians look like a grid within the body. And meridians really kind of set the tone for what we do as skin therapists with our hands. When we're doing a pressure point massage, we're accessing little door openings, if you want to think of it that way. And those are actually the acupressure points, or they can be called subo points, or pranas, or chakras, and all different parts of the Eastern world refers to them with little different language, right? So meridians, definitely, we have 12 of them. Easy to remember for each month of the year. And the door openings or the acupressure points, we have 365. And that's another great way to remember, ah, for all the days in the year. But it doesn't really correlate with that. It's just a good little memory trigger. So our ideal situation is to be able to have that a viewpoint of the body like a river. And if we think about that, through that river, through the meridian channels, uh, lies the organs. And we're going to highlight about 10 of them today, the, the larger organs that really reflect when we do do our work, where does that 
tap into? What are we reflecting to? How are we changing um, someone's uh, day or their, you know, how do they feel? So there's yin meridians, which pretty much start from and work from the earth on up. And then the yang and most yang meridian areas and cubal points are right as close to the heavens and close to the sun as we can get. So they're either numbered different ways. Some of you may know about that. Some of you are veterans in this and you go, oh, I know it. That's stomach point number four or number seven. And it's because, yes, there are charts. And do you know that Eastern philosophers are still observing and trying for more different pressure points? So they're not finished yet, even though 365 throughout the body and still to be developed. Interesting, huh? So if the body is like a river and there is that flow, that of balance, of chi, I'll bring that word up now, then the goal is to not have any blockages. So in a real landscaping and we saw a river, there might be a beaver, there might be that beaver building his dam. And all of a sudden there's one side of the dam that has a lot of flow and uh-oh, a blockage. And on the other side, we're not having much water flow. So if you kind of take that and envision it to be able to help you to say, hmm, there's stagnant areas, there's blockages, there's areas that the chi or the energy is not flowing. Okay, still don't quite know about chi? I bet you don't. If you're new to this, it, it is a whole different language. That's why we packed that suitcase up, right? So the normal opinions, the traditions that we have, kind of opening new channels for us to learn. All right. So here's the beginning of what we can try to explain about chi. And chi is not only energy. It's not blood, as I mentioned before. It's not lymph. And it's none of the elements of that we get our measurements from, right? When we know we may have a stagnant area or an energy that's not flowing. Mm, but Eastern philosophers say, wow, the energy is very important. Have you ever been to an event or in a party? And maybe you arrived alone or you are with a good friend and you look around and you look at your friend and say, I don't like the energy in this room. There's something about it. And you can't, you just say it, but you don't really know maybe what the true meaning can be. Or it can be the opposite. Wow, I love that event. That was so much fun. The energy was just great. Boy, that person has great energy. Well, we know now that it can be referred to as chi, right? So it's very much the life force. And the life force, again, is not something that's black and white. It's part of that yin and yang. It's part of that universal observation. And all mind and body uh, is connected together to create this life force. And yeah, very much grounds us to the universe. Some people identify more with their sunny days, as I mentioned. Others, it's like, no, give me the cooler weather. That's, again, a little resemblance of what we're talking about. And there it is, yin and yang. So we always want to have both elements. They're very important to have both, to be balanced, to be well balanced, I should say, too. All right. Now, this little snippet, couple minute video that I'm going to share is really kind of interesting. And I chose it because there is a doctor, Dr. Eisenberg, who is a Harvard graduate and went to Beijing in China to study qi and more things than that. So this little interview with Bill Moyer, who was a very famous broadcaster here in the United States, and he wrote, had a video made, but a book and such called The Mystery of Qi. And this is a little excerpt from that where they're in a Beijing hospital 
trying to explain to the American, they're both Americans, but to the American who's visiting the broadcaster, what is chi? So let's join in on their discussion. This is the herbal pharmacy. This is really the nerve center of this whole hospital. This is where the bulk of all the Chinese medical therapy is, right here. Look at this, these look like uh, scorpions. That's exactly right. What are them? It is a scorpion. I'm not wrong. <laughs> and this? Look. Um, that's, that's a gecko, a lizard. That's a medicine? Yes. What's the use of this? It decreases cough and relieves sputum. So that one treats a symptom. This? This is ginseng root, but it's it's the cheap form because there's some forms that cost thousands of dollars. Like tea. Like ginseng tea. That's right. right. What is it used for? This, wait, wait. This is great. This, this is to increase Qi, vital energy. Qi. Qi. That, uh, the best way we can translate that is vital energy, the, the force of life. Sort of the life force? Yes, yes. So that's what they say this does. Will it grow hair? Tofa, uh, Maybe. 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 <laughs> I don't think so, Bill. I've tried it. it this work. one will. <laughs> Look at that. Now, what's this one? Deer, these are deer antler. Stump of the antler shavings. What would be I know that is, this is a shaving of a deer antler. How often do you find that in a house? But I mean, do we know what the chemistry is in these herbs? We, we really don't. But the Chinese weren't interested in the chemistry as we know it. They're, they're not prescribed because of their active chemical ingredients. They're prescribed because one of them increases heat and one of them decreases stagnation of vital energy. That's the language that they use. It has nothing to do with chemistry. They see the body from a different viewpoint. To them, the body is based on energy, balance. All these herbs, and this is where most of Chinese medicine happens, are prescribed based on this sense of energy in the body. Um, qi, they call it. I told you it was a little snippet, but isn't that fascinating? When you think about, um, again, Eastern diets and not only the food, but the medicines. And many of us have integrated, right? How many of you do reflexology? How many of you have had reflexology or have had acupuncture? And we do acupressure, right, as skin therapists. So it's now you're thinking much more about the energy that you're trying to either sedate or to stimulate, right? Because it can be either way, either way. So saying that, oops, let's just go to the next slide here. We're going to be looking at these areas that we do our massage, if it's a European massage, but when we do pressure points, these are some of the organs that I mentioned that are very much on display. Some of the areas that we're trying to stimulate that flow and get that client really either, you know, uh, calm down or energized a little bit more. So if we look at the forehead area, we're looking at the meridians that express not only elimination, bladder, the digestive tract, and the small intestines. So things that can manifest when there might be an imbalance, you might ask, what about my, what am I looking for in skin? Well, we might see that there might be deeper lines. There might be an area that might be horizontal lines and such that are affected. Or that might be where the pigmentation uh, is really captured in more stressed areas. And again, it's the whole body. So it isn't just saying that's what's causing it. Could there be a malfunction in the digestive tract? Yeah, but we never want to say that to a client because unless you are a physician um, or nutritionist, we don't want to recommend, you know, that wait a minute, something might be going on in that liver area and scare the client. So we, we stay within our, our trainings, right? And what our 
are certainly what our state boards and such or in Europe, whatever we're told and what we can follow. But it's fascinating to know that these types of low energies, immune, things that really could be affected show up in disorders or changes within the body and in the face. Remember, the face never lies. So here's a real fun point, and that's the liver. So some of the areas that we're looking at are more um, interesting than others. Well, the liver happens to be kind of like that third eye. And in Chinese medicine or East Indian medicine, you see the beautiful women wearing their jewel in that area, right? Well, it's very much um, serotonin enhancement, but it's also known as the wine and dine area. So when it's a wine and dine area, you think, wait a minute. Well, it's for those late night diners that may be eating nine o'clock or so, having maybe too many glasses of wine. There's another element. They may be lactose intolerant, and yet they can't give up their cheese. They just, oh, I love it. So things get a little spongy there. I know all of you might be pressing right into that area now, hopefully with a very clean finger, but you're thinking, well, what's spongy feel like? Once you really get accomplished and feel and know skin and love it and feel all that texture, Sometimes it's not a full swelling, but it is kind of spongy-like, right? So I know that's the first area that everyone's testing right now. Um, so that's, that's an area to be aware of, right? And then if we look at a Western philosophy, it could be that there's congestion there because they just were waxed or they definitely, um, you know, just tweezed and or gave a vigorous type of exfoliation. So there's that balance, east and west together. We're exploring the east though today. So when we're looking at breakouts that might be above the eyebrows, that can be a real high adrenaline person. What do I mean by that? They're the people that sign up for the TV show, The Survivor. <laughs> it's been on like 27 years or so. Um, they bring everything to the edge. They put in those 17 hour days at work and they, they just are going on adrenaline all the time. So sometimes that's going to manifest in breakouts above the brows, or it could be again, they just were waxed and we look at a Western influence as why things might be happening there too. And then the spleen, which is actually right behind the stomach, kind of about the size of a kidney, is there very helpful to be able to be part of the lymph system and uh, the immune system very much. It's important in, very important in Chinese medicine too. When we look at the eyes, we're looking for puffiness, right? We're looking for lines, we're looking for discolor. And a lot of the seasons, which we talked about, how we go in and out of climates and seasons with the universe, people may have allergies, hay fever, areas that really start to puff up and be very full, or under color areas of pigmentation and such too. That's one of the big things people complain about, right? Do you have anything that I can use for my eye area? Well, they may not be even using an eye care product. So we do want to educate them on how we use the right products for some of the things that may be causing. Because I never want to share with a client, hmm, something might be wrong with your liver, right? That can alarm them. And that's really not a, um, a thing to do, <laughs> period. So when we're looking at the eyes, it's reflective of the kidney area as well as the ears. So kidneys definitely have a play in this for um, dehydration, can be a simple cause of dark circles, not enough water. And then oftentimes we see even things like ureic acid that can form gout. Some people are more subject to having that from a buildup of ureic acid. So we're looking at the cheeks right now, moving onward. Any of you, when you're doing your pressure point massages that you've learned probably from the International Dermal Institute through the years, 
Remember the sinus move? That's helping to add that pressure. And then we drain all the way along the cheekbones and under the cheekbones. That's a really nice one for not only sinus buildup, headaches, uh, swelling, things like that, allergy prone. So that's really a sign. And in the cheek area itself, I'll get rid of that pancreas just for a moment. We'll get to the middle of the cheeks. But there's the bridge of the nose, more associated with pancreas, pancreatic things that we have to look for in the um, intestines and such that we're going towards. Heart is reflective of our nose. Uh, many people that have um, hypertension, right? High blood pressure uh, may show elements of more red on the nose area, like capillary damage and such there. Again, we can't say, hey, has your heart been tested? Ready to have any type of heart surgery? You know, we these are signs and how we utilize them to be able to know more about the full uh, act of wellness and good health, right? So it's interesting, isn't it? There's the lungs. So we see a lot of respiratory, if there's a lot of congestion, redness, uh, irritation, blackheads, open, closed comedones, that might be their weak area. And it's asso associated with uh, respiratory. So maybe they've had asthma. Maybe they've had issues with uh, COPD, things that can connect with that too. Okay. And then the reproductive organs in the area can be uh, around the upper lip. Oftentimes we see a lot of hyperpigmentation there on females, right? So sometimes that can be, um, again, a connection or a reason that they may have those issues in that area here. And then more pigmentation. And when we get to the chin area, Stomach and colon are reflective of the upper lip to the lower lip. So cold sores, people that get those little viral kinds of cold sores or herpes and such very often, uh, or maybe canker sores inside the mouth, uh, high acids and such. Well, they often can be an imbalance in those areas too. And sometimes self-inflicted, right? If our diets and our sleep patterns and all things are connected, right? Not just the earth and the sun, but everything. And then along the lower part of the jaw, this is where we often, we females really get more breakouts, very hormonal area and associated with the back teeth, uh, the gums, and it can be issues there. They can be uh, recession and they also can be connected to a TMJ, that transporal mandibular joint. So people that grind their teeth at night or have clenching their jaw, they go, oh, I wake up with such a sore jaw. Those are great pressure points that we do in the back of the occipital bone behind the ears that we can access just to give a little solace, a little bit of relief in those areas, right? When we do pressure point massage. So ovaries, staying with that to the sides of the lower lip area, uh, connection, maybe that's an area for a lot of breakouts and such. And certainly, as I mentioned, elimination, much like we talked about with the forehead area as well, but this can be a challenged area. So whether it's, it's congestion, whether it's pigmentation, whether it's more dryness, flakiness. Remember how the mountain looked, right? All things connected. And then on the uh, chest area, that's also connected to the adrenal glands. So very much like the upper eyebrow area, that can be where a lot of people get their breakouts and they don't quite understand why. Maybe a Western version would be um, uh, synthetic sweaters, synthetic fabrics that can cause more of that mechanical kind of acne, but oftentimes it's connected to the patterns of many things that we're talking about today. And then some people that have more pustule types of uh, ways that they break out, they may find a cystic acne, they're prone to that. 
that's in the gene pool, of course, too, but it's very yang in nature. We're more of just congestion and oiliness, regular comedones that we affect and try to extract are more yin in nature. I think that's interesting too. Okay. So one of the alternative therapies, whether it be, uh, we talked about pressure point, of course, that we do to balance qi, but the ears are fascinating. In Chinese medicine, very popular, very common to examine the tongue as well as the ears. So there's over 121 acupressure points in the ears alone. And they're still developing, finding more, right? So by saying that, we can reflex the ears with our fingers, like we do the feet and the hands with reflexology. But auriculotherapy is the proper term for someone who studies and works on the ears for either pressure point or different ways in which we access. It can be finger pressure. That's how we help to take our thumb and our index finger and work on the lobes here, right? And then if we see the internal part of the ear, I know I love this one illustration, it kind of really shows a reflection of the whole body. So that's why 121 and growing acupressure points in the ears alone. So we often share the fetal child in reverse from the International Dermal Institute classes. You may have heard that when you've taken a pressure point class. And that is really a great understatement because we're having that whole body wrap around and a fetal child curled up in the ear Next time you get a mirror and start checking out your own ear or a client's, and as we're working them, we're working the internals, organs, the spine, the back, and it kind of feels like you're getting a full body massage, right? Yeah, very, very cool to work with ears. And of course, it takes its cue from acupuncturists working to balance the body that they may need to access there and yet it's reflective in one of the other meridian areas. So part of what Confucius said to me, not personally, not 2,500 years ago, 2,500 years ago, but I really, this spoke to me and I'd love to say it and share it with you. By three methods, we learn wisdom. First is reflection. The reflection of, what am I just learning? What's new? I need to think about that. Or when someone even shares any new information. The second is by imitation. We want to get in and try it. We want to learn. We want to do, right? Many of us learn that way. Some of us are more auditory, auditory or visionary. We're kind of a little of everything, right? And that's the easiest. The third is the experience, which is kind of bittersweet. Now we need to get that experience so it really makes sense. I remember when I first had to learn where pressure points were. And I said, I'm never gonna be accurate. I'm never gonna find them. And little by little, the more experience that we allow ourselves in that treatment room starts to make sense and all falls into play. So Confucius, thank you for that. Some of the books that um, I only brought up to today for your reading pleasure, they're not easy to find, but I know they're on Amazon and such and even eBay. Um, but if you wanted to take a screenshot of that, I know this is being recorded. So you'll have the complete illustrated guide to Chinese medicine, lots of great illustrations in that book. And uh, it really is simplistic, and yet it gets a little more advanced, too. So I think everyone can enjoy that. And then Your Face Never Lies. That's a little book, paperback book. And it's fascinating. It's really interesting. So this one's from a little different perspective. And there are hundreds, probably thousands of books on Eastern philosophies. These are two just favorites that I thought I would share. And the last thing I'd like to do is tell you a quick little story about learning. And we'll end with that. And there is 
a famous, many famous uh, Zen Buddhist stories. And this one is A Cup of Tea. And it's about an ancient monk, Buddhist monk or Taoist, as they're called too, who comes across a knock on his door where a young student is very eager to learn. And he's a student of the university in, in China, and he is anxious to be learning more about not just qi, but Zen, how can I study under you? I know so much, but yet I know so little. And I'm eager. And he never stops talking. So the monk invites him in. He said, let's first sit and have a cup of tea. So he pours him a cup of tea. And the other cup is for him. So he pours the normal tea into his very own cup first. And then he pours the tea. And as he's looking at the young student, the student is noticing that the master is overflowing the tea into the saucer. It's on the table. He's going, master, master, the tea is everywhere. It's flowing out of the cup. And he said, ah, you've learned your very first lesson. The cup must be empty in order to fulfill the knowledge. So he associated it with when the cup is way too full, you're never going to learn. If you have your own opinions and you're not open to new knowledge, may not really work. So I'm going to end on that note. And I hope that when you go home or enjoy this recording, maybe later, you'll enjoy that cup of tea and think of it a little different. So are you ready to pack your suitcase? <laughs> Maybe just rearrange it a little bit, right? So, kind of fun to do. I'm um, ready. So. <laughs> Good. I do. I do love that story. Um, it is a very clever way of saying be more open-minded to actually really take in the knowledge of others and everything around you. So, yeah. very, very, very. I true. love it. It's a great way to end the session and the webinar. Um, Okay. Thank you again, Judy, so much. Such awesome information. Um, I know that some people have asked about Chinese acupressure. We do mm. offer that as an International Dermal Institute master course. Yeah. And we offer that via IDI streaming. And in a handful of our, lo our, our locations that offer IDI curriculum, which will be your Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York locations. And then yeah. sometimes we host it a couple of other locations. So be on the lookout, but it's definitely on IDI streaming right now out of our Los Angeles location that you can sign up for. So just another connection. And I know a lot of people are just eager to see this in its like full complexity because this is just a nugget of information. It sure more, is. Just the vast information bit. that you can have from this, uh, just it's just some really interesting stuff. So um, we love that everybody's loving this. Look out, you never know, something might come out next year on a full Chinese diagnosis class. Mm. We're hoping, I'm crossing my fingers, and I know definitely Judy would be our guru on that. Um, and just any, we're, we're definitely in the International Dermal Institute always looking to push us to the new level and, and take us to mm. different, different places. So I know we, we had an Ayurvedic class and we've had aromatherapy that we offer and a fusion massage. So we really want to always give you the best of the best postgraduate education and really take you up to that professional skin therapist status. So Judy, thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. Um, thank have a you. wonderful weekend. Uh, lovely having all of you guys here. We always appreciate it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.